Hey everyone, so it's 2019 and dynamic EQs are more popular than ever and for a good reason because when it comes to orchestral instruments or just acoustic instruments in general, uh, they're very good to control any kind of resonance that is not necessarily wanted. Uh, especially when you got instruments which are recorded in medium to big room uh, or like in a studio, you tend to have resonances happening. But really it could happen in any space. Even in the small space, just the instrument itself could produce resonances which you might not want at all times. So we can use dynamic EQ to kind of add more consistency to the tone of something. And it's especially useful to use before compression. Uh, because say for example you got this cello here and it suddenly has a loud uh, low mid harmonic if you use a normal compressor you will just kind of turn down the sound altogether when that that peak happens but it means you will also turn down the high end right it's not multi-band in a way uh, if if that sound is loud it will just turn it down overall but you can hear that on these peaks it's mostly just this low 200 hertz harmonics and you might not necessarily want to uh, reduce the high end when these peaks happen. So to just kind of even out the tone, we can use dynamic EQ to really make the instrument uh, more polished sounding. So I will demonstrate now. All right, so let me demonstrate with the oud first. <laughs> So the first step of the, of the workflow should be to figure out what's not enough, what's just not right in the EQ in general. So I feel like it could be a bit brighter. Right, that's a cool turn. So that's the main thing we can do. Maybe we can also filter like that. Now, there is still some inconsistencies. Uh, sometimes there is these muddy harmonics jumping up here, and we don't want the oud to be thin, but we don't want these muddy harmonics to jump, especially at the end here. Oh, this one is muddy, right? So that's when dynamic EQ comes in. So we can just target what we want to eliminate once we got the main curve. Threshold. Right, so it's just acting when it's too loud. Okay, maybe another band. Okay, here for example. Hmm, that mid range is a bit too much, but we don't want to cut it all the time as well. So it's most likely going to blend a bit better in the mix. So now if it becomes too thin, we can just bring that up again and it's still going to dynamically cut these MIDI frequencies. Nice, so we have a fat sound, but we don't have these MIDI resonances. Uh, and then maybe we can just target the mid-range here. It gets ever so slightly boxy, so let's just slightly cut. But here, for example, uh, around this part, see here this note. Mm. It's a little bit too boxy, right? So we can control that. Let's just make sure that the threshold only acts pretty much when this note happens. Okay. We don't want this to act all the time, so let's look and make sure that it's not compressing all the time. Nice, see? When it's not needed... Mm. 
Mm, still a bit muddy, so... Nice. So as you can see, we just kind of figured out the main curve and then Dynamic EQ just helped us control the sound more. Uh, so it's a great modern way to process acoustic instruments to reduce natural resonances, which might be too muddy, uh, just too much overall. It could also be needed in the high end. Say you got a very uh, trebly part, you could also dynamically cut it with Dynamic EQ. So in Pro-Q3, we can do it all in one. But if you don't have Pro-Q3, you can just use a normal EQ first, set up your tone first, and then second in the chain, just put a Dynamic EQ right after it and do your cuts uh, on a different plugin. But that's the idea. That's my workflow for Dynamic EQ. So once you kind of even out the tone a bit like that, uh, then you can maybe apply general compression um, just to kind of bring in all these peaks together because you, you might not want such huge dynamics. Um, but yeah, another quick example. So if we got a flute here and the 1K, the mid range kind of gets a bit loud sometimes and a bit too loud compared to the air, but we want the texture to be quite stable because we want to fill the air of the flute at all times and we don't want the mid-range to blow the flute out of the mix. Uh, we can do something like that, for example. So that's the main curve. That's the dynamic EQ curve. And it's actually going to prepare the track for compression better as well, because now this, this, this frequency is not going to trigger the compressor as much. Right, it's just more balanced. So now, compared to without the EQ, uh, you can see it went all the way almost to five here compared to three. So it was all triggered by this note here, and yeah, it's just going to not be as natural as if we just put dynamic EQ before. So we can get a smoother uh, compression as well, which is nice. And uh, yeah, that's a good way to use dynamic EQ. So first think about the main EQ, then think about the inconsistencies and how much you want to cut them. Now don't completely nuke any kind of inconsistency and squash every frequency because every instrument is going to have some tonal variation, which is natural. Uh, just think about reducing the excess. That's really how you want to think of it. So yeah, just be careful. But it can really help you get a clean sound. See so yeah, guys, I will see you in another video. Cheers.